All right. So, um, any questions um, from last week or related to uh, PA2 or anything else? Silence is a good sign in this case, maybe. All right, well, just uh, keep moving forward with PA2 then. Um, and let's go on to a new topic. So um, I said I was gonna talk about iterators. So this is, this is a general concept. It comes up in different forms. Um, but it's a really useful notion. So what's the idea of an iterator? Well, suppose you have an array of, of data, okay? And it's just a plain old array like in C or something. And you know how big it is, right? Let's say this array is called data and it contains 10 elements. So you have data bracket zero, data bracket one, up through data bracket nine. If you want to work with that data, if you want to print it, if you want to analyze it or something like that, it's really easy to do. You make a for loop for i equals zero to nine, do something with data bracket i, right? Um, but as we start working with more interesting data structures than arrays, be they linked lists or trees or hash tables or um, collections or sets or things like that, um, we lose this ability to get through all of the elements by simply increasing an index. Okay, now a linked list is, is a bit in between these two scenarios because a linked list, we do have a notion of what's the first element of the list, what's the second element, what's the third, and so on. And so, you know, if you look at the documentation for a linked list, it actually has this method called get that will take an index. So we could iterate through the elements of a linked list the way that we do an array. We can call the size method to see how many things are in the list and then we can get those one at a time. But that's kind of an exception to what happens in general with data structures. In general, when we have a structure holding a bunch of data, there may be no natural way to go through that data, nothing like an index. And, and this pops up most noticeably in hashes, right? So you're building an index and it's keyed off of words and associated with each word is a linked list. And your keys might be, you know, dog and cat and mouse. And so whatever your, your index is called, right? We can think of like index as an array that we access with these non-numeric things and so on. Or we could index it with integers, you know, but they might be any old integers. They might not be sequential. They might not start at zero. Or we could index with floating point numbers or rectangles or linked lists or anything else we want, right? So if you have a collection of data that you can access like this, how do you get to each of the elements? How do you know that there's an element indexed by dog so that I can say, give me element dog, right? So this is where an iterator comes in. An iterator is something that comes along with the data structure and can be used to say, give me a piece of data from the structure, give me another piece, give me another piece, so that you eventually get all of the pieces that are stored in that structure. And it's a little bit similar to what happens with a file on disk, right? So think about a file sitting on disk. So it's got lines of text in it. And we could say, you know, give me line zero, give me line one, two, give me line two, line three, line four, line five. We could ask, you know, how many lines are in the file, then make a for loop and go through and ask for each line one by one. But that's not what we do with files, right? We don't think of them as, you know, organized in terms of first line, second line, or first character, or second character. 
we simply come in with some sort of method and we say, give me the first line, give me the next line, give me the next line, keep doing this until there is no next line. And then let me know that there's nothing left in the file. So when we do this with a scanner, we use a pair of methods, which sound like has next and next. And it could just be has next and next to get a word, or has next line and next line to get a line, or has next int and next int, and so on. Um, but this is basically an iterator structure. Okay, we we find out if there's anything left in this. If there is, then we get whatever that next thing is. Okay, so let's look at this for a linked list because it's it's a fairly straightforward set of. Uh, methods and then let's, let's look at it for a hash table um, so our structures like lists ordered for the sake of iterating well they're ordered because linked lists always have an order there's always a a first node and that points to another node and another so there is an inherent ordering inside of the linked list um, not for the sake of iterating but that makes it you know pretty straightforward to iterate on a linked list um, but then there's things like there's there's uh, sets in uh, in Java and sets are unordered by their nature. There's no inherent first element to a set. This is G15 stuff, right? Um, and so sets we definitely need an iterator for. All right, so let's write some code. So let's play with linked lists. So we'll import the linked list class. Um, and we'll declare a linked list object. Um, let's, let's call it uh, sunny because it just got sunny out here. So this is how we normally construct an object, right? We just use the new keyword. Remember, linked lists are generic. They need to know what kind of object you're putting in your list. So this this uh, element indicator, E in angle brackets, has to be specified. So we'll do a linked list angle bracket integer um, equals new linked list integer. You now let's do strings. I always do integers. Let's make a linked list of strings. All right, so Sunny is a linked list. And I'm just going to add some words to our linked list. Um, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm writing a song here for the 60s here. Uh, Monday afternoon, breezy, uh, whispers, um, good day. All right, so there we go. Um, so that, that's my linked list. Um, and we know that linked lists come with a two-string method. which will turn our object into a string, which is a pair of angle brackets with each element from the list uh, printed out separated by commas. So I'm gonna make my aliases today. So we'll compile that up and we'll run it and there's our list. Um, so, so if we want to get the elements of the list, one option is to turn it into a string, right? And um, and then use the two string, you know, use string manipulation. But that that's not a good approach because, you know, if I happen to have an element which is good, comma good, and then I run it, well, if I just look at the string version of my object, it looks like I have seven things in my list. But in fact, this is 
um, the fifth thing in my list, and this is the sixth. So we'd like to be able to get to the elements of this list by doing something other than you know grabbing the string and breaking it apart. Um, so so let's look at an iterator. So on a linked list, go down through the methods, and you'll see something called list iterator. Okay, so linked lists have their own type of iterator called a list iterator. Most other collections just have a thing called an iterator, but they work similarly. So list iterator um, takes an index, which is the starting position of the list. So if you want to iterate across the entire list, we would call this with an index of zero. Okay, and it'll return an object of type uppercase list iterator. So let's let's make a list iterator. And it's going to have to iterate on strings. So list iterator, um, I'll just call this lit equals. And we use the list iterator method of the linked list. So sunny dot list iterator and we'll start from element zero. And list iterators, they come from Java utility. Sorry, that's linked list. They come from um, Java utility. So we also need to include or import uh, Java utility list iterator. All right, so we're creating a, a list iterator in here. I'm going to compile as I go so that if I start making syntax errors, I don't make them, you know, in 10 different places um, without realizing it. So I'll compile as I write code that I don't normally write. Okay, so lit is a list iterator. Well, what do we do with that? List iterator comes with a series of methods. In particular, this method called next and this method called has next. So has next is a boolean tells us if um, there's more elements to get out of the list. And if there are, then next will give us the next element and advance the cursor position. So this invisible cursor that's moving down the list, right? This was your next current pointer business that you did in 222. That's what's going on inside this, this method, right? So, so someone who wrote this you know, made something called current or next, right? That points to where they are in the list. And when you say, give me the next element, it looks at that node's next value, moves to that, updates its internal pointer. So that the next time you try to get the next element, it knows where it left off, okay? So the stuff that you did in 222, right? That's what had to be done to implement these things inside Java, okay? Somebody had to do that. Um, all right, so the iterator comes with this has next and this next method. So, um, so let's just do an infinite loop first. So let's do next element. Do string next element equals lit dot next. So make a string called next element, set that to the next element from the list iterator, and let's print it out. And let's just do that in a loop. So this will work well until it gets to the end. Right, so those are the elements in our list. But after that last element, when we called um, at line 22, right, and we tried to get the next element, it threw up, right? Because there was no next element. That's exactly what this error is saying, no such element. Okay, so, you know, instead of an infinite loop, well, our list iterator has a next element. Let's go ahead and get that element and then print it out. And then when we're done, um, we'll just say that's all. So now when you run it, it works nicely. It goes through 
gives you each element whenever you say next, and then at the very end it, it uh, has next fails and it comes out of the while loop. So nothing, nothing too tricky going on there. Um, but this, you know, this has next, next pair. This is what we do with scanners. This is something we'll see a lot of. Okay. All right, now how does this work for a hash map? So remember for our indexer, Right, indexer for PA2 um, creates, let me just call it end. Right, creates this, this class that we're creating uh, called an indexer, so it makes an instance of that, which I'm gonna call end, I-N-D. Um, and we can say, you know, that thing dot process file. and ask it to ingest a file and, and build an index on it. And then we can use various methods to see how many words are in the index and what the nth word is and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so I've added something to my indexer and you don't need this for PA2, okay? But it's something that I just added just for the sake of, of this lecture. So my index also has a get index method. And this returns the internal hash. And we'll mark this as experimental. Meaning when somebody, you know, pays money for your package and they look at this, they say, oh, that's not supported, right? I might use that and it might do something weird, that's okay, it's experimental. So don't, don't worry about putting this in your PA2, okay? It's not part of PA2. But I wanted a hash map to work on, so I figured I would just use the hash map from PA2 and just give us this extra get index method. All right, so let's, um, let's build a hash map. And, and I already posted uh, versions of all this code from the morning lecture, so you can find all of this stuff on the, uh, the shared area. So I'll go ahead and take this out. So let's make an indexer object. Okay. And then I'm going to um, process a file. And I'll go ahead and do a check here and say, if that returns false, let's just kick out of here. Okay, so remember process file returns a Boolean. That Boolean is true if it processes the file, it's false if something goes wrong. So if I don't have a war and peace dot text in here, it will return false and my if condition will kick me out of my program. So if I make it past this line, I have processed the file, which means there is a hash map inside my index class. Okay, so now I'm going to use my my optional um, method, and I'm going to do the following hash map. So my words, my key is a string, and my data value is a linked list of integers. So I'll call this internal map. And this is index.getIndex. So I'll go ahead and I'll import um, hash map. And let's compile, good. All right, so um, so I've, I've created this, this hash map called internal map. Let's take a look at it. Just to make sure this is doing what we think. 
right? So our internal map is equal to, and it's the big long thing that you get when you run two string on a hash map. Okay, and this is what your index to string also returns, right? So, um, and this this came up this morning, so let me just mention it here. So your two string method um, returns the two string of your hash table, okay? If you have actually processed a file. If you haven't processed a file, return null, okay? Because if you don't have a hash table and you try to return that hash table's two string, you'll get a null pointer exception. All right, so, um, so make sure you, you um, check that. But anyway, you return the two string, um, which will look like this. All right, suppose we want to go through this one word at a time, one entry at a time, right? And we want to do something like, I don't know, put them into an array so that we can, we can sort them or try to reassemble our original text from this information, right? Um, so, so what are we going to do? Let's, let's use an iterator, okay? So let's get rid of this. So remember, our hash is, is indexed with these key data pairs. Sometimes they're called key value. But the key is, is the thing. It's the thing we go into the, the associative array with to pull out a piece of information. So um, let's look at the documentation for a hash map. And hash map has a method called key set. Okay, key set returns a set, which is another type of class um, that contains all of the keys in this map. Okay, for us, the keys are the collection of words. So this key set is going to be a set containing each of the words in our original file. And if we look at the documentation on set, Set is another generic thing, okay? We have to specify the types of things that are in this set. And it's basically a collection that contains no duplicate elements. Okay, again, think CSE 215. It's just a collection of things, has no inherent ordering, um, has no duplicates. Um, very simple uh, class in some ways. All right, so let's... Um, Let's get a set. Um, so set of strings um, are keys equals. Um, so what's the internal map dot get keys? Or is it key set? Key set. So make a set of keys from our word index. Um, that should have everything that's in our uh, internal hash map. All right, so sets, go away, there we go. So sets um, come from Java utility. So let's go ahead and import that. And it's set without an S. Okay, still compiles, that's good. Okay, once we have a set, what do we do with it? Well, we get an iterator. So every set comes with an iterator method which returns an iterator that will iterate over the elements of the set. So instead of a list iterator, this is just a plain old iterator. So um, we'll import iterator and let's get that. So. 
Iterators are generic. They need to know what type of thing they're iterating over. So for us, that's still a string. So iterator iter equals um, our key set dot iterator. All right, so think about the steps going on here, right? We have a hash map. Forget about how we got it, but internal map is a hash map. We call a key set. That gives us a set, okay, called R keys. And in that set, we call the iterator method. That gives us an iterator. And now we can do the following. So we can say while iter dot has next. In other words, while there's more stuff in our set, we can call the next word method and it'll return to us a string because we said we're iterating over strings. And we can just store that in next word. And let's go ahead and print that out. close out our loop and that's our whole iteration scheme so compile that um, sorry it's just next so it has next and next and run that and there's a list of words from war and peace and there's no guaranteed order to this okay um, it's almost certainly not going to be in the same order in which you put these things into the dictionary. It's not going to be alphabetical. Um, it's pretty randomish what the order is. Now, if you think about when we talked about hashes in 222, what were we doing? We were making an array, and it had a fixed number of locations indexed from 0 up through n maybe n minus one, and you would take your key and you would run it through some function which would give you something between zero and n minus one, and that's where you would store your key and your data in your array. And so some of these spots had data in them, some of them were empty. And there was no rhyme or reason, you know, no obvious explanation for what was stored where in here. It was a function of this this hash function, right? Add up the ASCII characters of the string and take it modulo n, for example. So if you wanted to iterate, right, over the elements of the array, what would you do? You would go through the array probably from beginning to end, and if that cell in your array was not empty, you would print it out, right, or return it. And something like that is happening inside this iterator. Okay, we don't know what it is. We don't need to know what it is. Okay, this is information hiding. The details of this, how the hash is even implemented, is, is on the other side of the firewall. The only thing we know about a hash map is what we get from the, um, the documentation, right? So it's, it's a hash that we can put things into, we can get things from, we can see if it's empty, we can clear it out, we can merge it and so on and so forth, right? So you have this very controlled interface to it. Um, and there's all this stuff going on under the hood. Okay, so iterators, iterators give us access to the data without us knowing necessarily how that's working. Um, that's why we have an iterator, because we don't want to go in and browse the array directly or something. Um, so suppose we want to look at the locations associated with each word um, or find the last location where, where each word is stored. Okay, so next word is, is what? It's a key. Okay, it's an element of the set that we got by calling key set. Okay, so let's... Next word is a key for the hash map named uh, internal map. 
So if we want to get the data associated with that, we can say something like linked list, which is a linked list of integers, equals um, internal map dot get next word. Right, so we go into the hash with the next word, which is a key. We use the get method, and it should return the data associated with that. And the data associated with, with a key for us is a linked list of integers. So I need to name this. Uh, let's call this locations. So locations is a linked list of the locations where the next word appears. All right, well, let's, let's print out the last spot where each word occurs. Okay, so we have a linked list. The last spot would be whatever the last element is on the linked list. So look at the linked list class. Um, and we can say get last. Okay, and that'll give us the last element. We could also say size to see how big the list is. Right, that'll tell us how many things are in there. And then we could use get on size minus one. And that would also be the last element. But we've got a get last method. So let's just um, print this out. So. So next words, last location is, and let's print out locations.getLast. And so there's a list of the last spot where each word occurs. So if we wanted to do this a little differently, let's do a print F. And let's swap the order of these. So there's a location where the word occurs and there's the actual word. Just doing a C style printf. And now, if we put this into sort, um, I don't think I have enough. So I think this will tell us the last word of war and peace. In fact, to a pretty good measure, it gives us the last sentence of war and peace. But of course, you know, some of these words, um, right, the word that occurs at position 904, that may not be the last place it occurs. But, you know, that's probably the... the last sentence. All right, and recognize dependence, which we are not conscious. There you go. Um, and if you want to know how it begins, uh, that's a little harder to do. So anyway, just, just playing around with this, right? But, um, but the idea is, right, we can iterate over these things um, over these keys and the iterator gives us back the matching um, 
you know, the next key, and we can go into the hash with that key uh, through the get method and get back the word. And I'm doing this with lots of temporary variables in here, right? So I made a variable called locations for the linked list, um, and next word for um, the word itself, right? But, um, you know, if we do internal uh, map.get next word, that's a linked list, and we want to call the get last method. So we could actually, instead of putting locations here, we could do internal map.get next word dot get last. And we don't need that line anymore. All right, and it'll still run. So, so this is, you know, something to keep in mind. That's a thing. So this is a hash map. This is the get method that gets the word, um, which means that this is a data value, which is a linked list, and the linked list has a get last method. And if we just wanted to see, you know, the last spot where everything occurs, instead of next word, we could have done iter dot next, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this can go away. And this just tells us locations where, you know, the last location of each word which you can do some interesting analysis on. Um, but this is this is one line, right? And we're, we're getting the next key from the key set. We're feeding that into the get method of a hash map to retrieve the matching linked list. And then from that linked list, we're asking for the last element. So you don't have to write things like this. And this is usually, this is often more confusing to like write it in one line and you've got parentheses you can get tangled up on and so on. But you should be able to think about it like this eventually, right? Um, and maybe you still write it with temporary variables and stuff, but this, this should start to feel more comfortable over time. If you're really thinking in these terms of objects, right? If you're thinking not of calling a function and what is a function return, but you're actually thinking this thing is a key, right? And so I'm I'm got a hash map and I'm calling the get method with that key. And now I'm thinking this thing that's highlighted is a linked list. And the linked list, you know, I'm getting the last thing. And if that was a string, you know, I could do a dot length paren paren to see how long that word is at the end of the linked list and so on. So you wanna you wanna think about the idea that these are are full-blown objects and we can we can treat them like that all right um, so any questions on that all right So let's um let's change gears for a bit and let's talk about how we would make a linked list class. Okay, now 222 we built all our own data structures from the ground up, right? We had arrays and we had pointers and we built everything else out of those. Um, 223 we're in Java, so a lot of the data structures exist for us, linked lists, hash maps, right? And we're using those in PA too. But we can still implement these things ourselves, right? So you're implementing an indexer class, for example. Um, but if we wanted to implement a linked list that did something different from the linked list class, um, we can totally do that. So just for more practice, let's play with this a bit. So let's make a class. Let's call it my list. And a my list, we're not going to do sentinel nodes, okay? Um, but a my list, when we construct my list, somehow we've got to have a way to get to the first node of the list, okay? 
So I'm going to make an entry in here called first node. I'm going to initialize it to null because when we construct a list, it's going to be empty. And we need to decide what kind of object this is going to be. Well, I'm calling it first node because it's a node. So let's just call it an object of type node. And let's make another class to describe what a node is. And let's make a list of integers. Okay, just plain ints. So what are the two pieces we need in a linked list node? Feel free to just chime in. I'm doing too much talking, so uh, feel free to just jump in. What What are the uh, two things we had in a struct node, generally speaking? Uh, yes, uh, you can use your microphone too. But yeah, um, data and uh, next, a pointer, right? So, um, so we're going to have a data field and we're going to have a next field and I'm just going to make the data an integer. Um, what kind of thing should next be? Yeah, exactly. It's a node. So we can just say node next and this is okay right this this will drive a C compiler crazy if you put a structure inside a structure um, but but it's okay in Java right so let's let's um let's make some stuff So this is a public class node. Integer data, node next. So we can compile that. It's perfectly happy with that. Okay, let's make these private. because we definitely don't want somebody outside a, a main program to come in and manipulate the contents of a node directly. We want to do that inside our, our MyList class. I'm not gonna make them private, Never mind. Uh, I should make them what's called protected and then put this in the same package as MyList and then they can interact with each other's data, but outside entities can't. But I'm not gonna get that fancy today, so. We'll just let them be public. So a node basically has has a data value and it has a next value. Okay. Um, now usually when we construct a node, right, we want to store something in our list, we're going to construct a node. As soon as we construct a node, we want to set its data value equal to some number and we, you know, want to set its, its next value to some other node to point to. So let's make a constructor for a node that will let us do those things in one call. So this is a linked list node. Um, so our my list is just a chain of these. So um, there's our node. Um, construct a node by specifying its data value. So we'll say public node, okay, so that's the constructor, and we will pass it an integer called D. Save this uh, value in the class variable, which is data. So when I construct a node, I can say node n equals new node parentheses five, it creates a node, whose data value is equal to five. And let's go ahead and set next equal to null, just so we know what its value is, right? 
and there's a there's a perfectly good constructor and that's probably the totality of the node class okay now for different kinds of of linked lists right lists of different objects we might want to do more with the node but this is probably enough to to get us running and it still compiles we didn't break anything okay so let's think about my list um, we're going to have an initial node which is null um, and let's add stuff to our list so let me do this in code So here's a my list. Um, so let's let's make an add method. So public, uh, we're just going to return void, right? We don't need to return a value. Um, add integer n. So let's add. New node with data equal n to the end of the list. All right, well, let's make a temporary node. So node temp equals new node n. Bingo, we've got a node whose data value is equal to n and whose next value is equal to null. Okay, that's pretty easy. So that's doing the malloc and, and setting values and all that kind of stuff for us. Okay, so we've we've got a, a temporary node. Um, okay, so an edge case is if the list is empty to begin with. Okay, we don't have a sentinel node here, so this is a special case. So this is pretty easy to deal with. If first node is null. Then set first node equal to our temporary node and return. Right? So so this code should be somewhat self-documenting. I still want you to put comments on, right? But um, you know, it's pretty clear what's going on here. If our first node is null, set our first node to our temporary node and return. So now we have a list with just one thing in it. Otherwise, we have to do some sort of loop. But we have to write that as a comment. All right. So we'll we'll continue this tomorrow, but you can you can imagine what it's going to look like, right? We're going to set something to this first node, um, and as long as the next field is not null, we're going to move down to you know the next node until we get to the last node, and then we'll say last node um, dot next equals temp, and we'll be done. All right, so think about that, um, and we will um, we'll dig further into this tomorrow. All right, have a good afternoon. I will catch you next time.